All right, YouTube, how's it going today? It's so good to see you again. Today, we're gonna talk about mini splits. So if you have been trying to think about how you're gonna design your soundproof studio, and you may have come across the idea of using a mini, mini split to heat or cool your studio. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the reasons why I think the mini split could be the best option for you when you're thinking about heating and cooling your studio and some other things to think about if you decide to go that route. All right, so let's jump into the video right now. Okay, so first off, I absolutely love my Mr. Cool mini split. If you're gonna go the option of a mini split, I highly recommend getting the Mr. Cool for one reason, and that is technically you can install this yourself. You don't need to pay an HVAC specialist, which would cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, I'm talking four, five, six, seven thousand uh, dollars is what a lot of these HVAC specialists charge for a unit that at Home Depot or Lowe's or some other construction store only costs you about $1,200 to $2,000, depending on the size. Now, one thing to think of right off the bat, if your room is really, really small, let's say you only need about like 900 or 700 BTUs, which is the measurement of how much heating or cooling you need per square footage, those small units, technically you cannot install yourself. So just keep that in mind. But as soon as you get up to the 1,200 BTU range, which is what I have for my 270 square foot studio, you will be just fine. And anything bigger than that, I'm also pretty sure you can install yourself. Let's just talk about the um, main thing you're probably worried about, which is the noise of a mini split. So right now it is actually running. It's heating my room at exactly 72 degrees. It feels great in here. It feels great in the summertime. It feels great in the fall, spring. Every time of year, I've had it for over a year now. I felt it all and this thing is great. It even dehumidifies and it is very quiet. So it has this actual little controller right here and it even has a silent mode on it. So the silent mode is great for if you're doing like a vocal take or you're doing a quiet guitar take or if you're doing drums and you don't want any sort of airflow to hit those overhead mics, uh, silent mode is awesome. I almost never turn this thing off because it is so freaking quiet. It is literally like you won't even notice it and it's never been a problem with any of my recordings. So I would highly recommend this guy. Um, one thing I've noticed about it too is it's it's a little bit more temperamental in terms of you might find, especially in the summer months, you're constantly kind of like adjusting the temperature. Since it is such a small room, usually in a studio, this thing is kind of pumping out a lot of cool air, a lot of heat. So you might find yourself changing the temperature a little bit more than you would with say like a full HVAC system with your custom like house uh, monitor that you use thermostat with that. So it might be a little bit different, but honestly it is a super, super easy system. When we installed it, um, Henry Thompson, my contractor, helped out a lot. Now I'm saying you can install this yourself, but the truth is, you know, you're gonna need a couple tools. You're gonna wanna take a really close read of the user manual and make sure you kind of understand the general concepts. The main thing you gotta really think about here is you're dealing with some HVAC systems where your refrigerant line is, is already in there. So with a normal H uh, mini split system, an HVAC specialist would have to actually fill the refrigerant lines, which is something that's pretty complicated and not something the average person would or should do. With this, they're already ready to go. So when you install the refrigerant lines into the unit and into the compressor outside, you're gonna wanna make sure that you use the right torque. So you're gonna need a torque wrench and be very careful not to over tighten it. There's just some very specific things you need to be careful with. But like I said, if you're handy or if you know somebody who is, this is certainly something you can hire someone to do that won't cost you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Also, there's a lot of great YouTube videos on how to actually install this thing on the internet so you can watch those. I am gonna show you real quick that because because this was a soundproof studio, one thing we were worried about was putting a direct hole through the back of the HVAC system directly to the outside, which is what you would normally do with this unit. You would actually put a pretty sizable hole, I think about six inches or more, through the, your wall, and then that would go down to the condenser outside, and voila, super easy. And on YouTube and other videos, that's what you're gonna see. What you won't see is what I'm gonna tell you, which is that we actually ran our refrigerant lines through the double wall system we had. So this is kind of something I don't think is done very often. The only downside of this is if you had a leak, it could be catastrophic. You would have to open up your walls. And yeah, that's something we don't want to do. But honestly, I'm not too worried about it. I think this will be great. Um, so we ran that refrigerant line 
the hot and cold refri- uh, refrigerant line through the walls and then out the wall at a completely different side of the studio into the condenser outside and then hooked it up through there. When the we made that hole through the wall system to the outside, remember we only made one hole in the outside wall and then behind the actual mini split itself, we made one hole behind the mini split. So in essence, we're not creating two holes in our wall system that go directly through to the outside, which in my opinion, uh, created less of a chance for noise to get through. And honestly, having been recording in this studio for over a year, doing tons of drum tracking, doing tons of loud record recordings, listening to speakers in here, I can tell you that that did not cause a problem at all with our soundproofing. So don't worry about that. So this is a great method if you wanna do what we did. I think it works well. And the refrigerant line that they give you is is at least, I wanna say 20 to 40 feet, it's pretty long. So you'll be able to run it through your walls a good ways to get it to where that condenser is. Another thing to think about when you're putting in this mini split is you want it to be the long facing of your room. So originally in my design, I had had it out of the way on the side and I talked to an HVAC specialist um, who told me that my room could handle 1200 BTUs, which was good to know. Um, So this is something you can do. It's a little shysty, uh, but you could actually have an HVAC specialist come out, look at your studio, size it up, kind of get the quote and then be like, thanks for all the information, man. I'm actually gonna go with the Mr. Cool system because it's way cheaper. But thank you for letting me know what size I need for my room um, and where to place it in my room. Because this guy was really good about being like, well, I would honestly put it high up and kind of sending it the long way of your room. And he's right. It ends up being more efficient with heating and cooling that room. So if you're thinking of going the mini split model, I cannot recommend it enough. The one caveat that is so important, and you may have seen this in other videos that I've done, and I've been talking about this a lot, is ventilation. When you create a soundproof room, a lot of people think this mini split is gonna be transferring air in and out of your room. It makes sense, it's like heating and cooling. It seems like, oh yeah, This should just also bring fresh air from the outside, but that is actually not how most HVAC systems work, including a mini split. What they normally do is they take the air that's already in the room, they cycle it through the compressor, cycle it over the the cooling grid in your mini split, and either heat or cool that air uh, in the room. So you're not actually pulling air in and out. And remember, I'm talking to you like a layperson. My knowledge and vocabulary with this stuff is not super high tech. So I apologize if I'm saying things slightly off, but the general concept here, uh, is what you need to understand. And so there is no air transfer. So that means that for my studio, for example, before I put in my ventilation system, opening and closing the door was the only way I would get fresh air in. And if the temperature in the studio and the temperature outside were roughly the same, that means there was no transfer of air. That means there was no movement of hot to cold uh, and your studio literally just sat uh, with all the CO2 buildup that you don't really want in the air. So, that said, you know, watch some of my other videos on ventilation. I'm coming out with more about how to build your ventilation system, but that is something that's really important to think about. Do not think of your mini split system as something that will provide fresh air transfer in and out of your room. Okay, I hope this video was so helpful today. Uh, My goal is always to help you guys through this complicated mess of how to build a soundproof studio. If you are interested in learning more, I have a free course that tons of people, I think we have almost 200 people who have taken this course so far, uh, and everyone has told me that it's helping them so much. Honestly, it probably shouldn't be free, but I am giving it to you guys because I just wanna help you out so much and uh, help you not make some of the same mistakes that I made when building my own soundproof studio. So check out the link to that free course below. I will see you all next week. Every Monday, I'm making new videos to help you build a soundproof studio. So until then, have a great week and uh, stay safe and healthy. All right, bye.